So I'd like to show you some nice color mixes that you can use for painting maybe some storm clouds. You can use some burnt umber. Take your burnt umber and you can take ultramarine blue and then you can take those two and mix them together and you get a really nice dark underpainting for storm clouds because you want your, your clouds to be grayish color. Well, these are really nice color combinations for nice background or underpainting for storm clouds. Probably some equal amounts of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And then when you mix two of those together, you'll get a really nice dark color. This nice underpainting for storm clouds. See that? that pretty? That's nice. That's that one. Another nice combination for a sunset would be, you can use permanent rose or you can use cad red and cad yellow. Equal amounts. I'm just bringing it down here so I can show you what it looks like when you mix two of them together. So you can use that for a beautiful sunset. That nice look at that so depending on how light or dark you want your sunset you can use a little more yellow or a little less red Isn't that pretty that's a nice one another nice combination would be a deep dark green color and it'd be hunter green or any dark green really dark green color see how nice and dark that is and then you could use ultramarine blue which are equal amounts and this will make a really nice color for you know when you make water like a sea color add that and you got a nice sea color that nice so you get the blue and the green nice now so a combination of colors really makes a difference when you're trying to get like some people make a sunset and they will and they use too much yellow too much red but if you e use equal amounts you should get a really nice combination you, you combine them together and they come out to a really nice color that you can use without having to worry too much about um i'm using too much yellow i'm using too much red if you use equal amounts first put them together and then if you do need to brighten up a little more and add a little more yellow or a little more red rather than oh, a bunch of yellow, bunch of red, bunch of yellow, bunch of red, and you're wasting all your paint. So just equal amounts first. And then if you decide you want to go a little darker, then you can always add more your dark green to get a darker, deeper color. But you still have your blue in there. See, same with your ultramarine blue and your burnt sienna. So if you want a brighter sea or ocean, you can add a lighter green and your ultramarine blue and then you'd have a lighter color see a lighter color ocean or water or whatever you're trying to paint in the water area of your painting and if you want to brighten it up again you can even add more yellow to it see and that brighten it up even more so if you do the equal amounts first then you all you have to do then is just add a little bit of a brighter color or a darker color and that way you don't waste too much paint so you get a really pretty color there for an ocean or for grass for highlights on your grass you know so mix it that way and that will help you tremendously to make color color mixing much easier for you so if you want to lighten up any of these mostly greens you can lighten with the uh, with the yellow but if you want to lighten up some of these colors, you can add a little bit of white also. A little bit of white will brighten it up even more, see? So it makes it so much easier to start off with equal amounts of, of two different colors. You can even do it with three different colors, okay? So you add a bit of white and that, that helps clean it up. 
make it really nice and bright. There we go. I should have cleaned my brush. <laughs> Clean my brush, make it turn green on me. But that's okay. Look, see, I just had a little bit of white and that changed the color completely. And a bit of white here changes it. But it's a, such a, a, a better way to mix your paints so that you can, so you don't waste paint. And so that you can test out the colors to see what you like. Even if you want to make pink, you could put red on there. An equal amount of white. And then you mix two of them together. And you get a nice pink. So now you got all your pink together. And then if you say, well, now you don't have to waste any more red. And, or, and then you can add a little bit of white if you want to brighten it up even more. So I think it's a good way to save on paint, to uh, take the color mixing process and make it much easier for you. So equal amounts, then add a little extra of whatever one you want to lighten or darken it. And if you want to lighten it even more, just add a bit more white. And here is a fan brush. And here are some uses for your fan brush. So you can make some nice shapes and you can make some nice strokes to make grass make different jabs and strokes so i get some green paint together i like mixing my own paint because it teaches you how to mix your colors whether you want a dark green or a light green all right so that's and if you want to make it darker than that i want to this is um just showing you how to use the fan brush, but I just wanted to show you how, to, how I'm getting darker green. I'm just adding some burnt umber to my yellow and blue. See? And then with your fan brush, all you have to do to make some grass is pull up some strokes like that. See? It's pretty cool, hey? Just pull up, touch, pull up. Got some nice grass going on there. And push a little harder to get get it taller like that there we go you can also just tap on some grass like that it's a nice grassy one isn't it look at that fan brush is great for grass bushes you can use the corner of your brush for tapping on see see the fan brush gives you see how it gives those edges the texture right Isn't that nice just use the corner and that way you'll get those nice shapes look at that pretty cool and you can also just make some nice jabs pull up just short ones if you want, right? And you can also get some paint and then you can tap and while the paint is still wet, then you can pull up like that, see? And you can, you know, go that way and this way and that way you'll be able to get, so that's some shape and some movement. Look how nice that is. It's nice, isn't it? Now, you can also use a scruffy brush, which is a bristle. It's a bristle brush. And a bristle brush is really nice for dragging some lines across, get different textures, and just drag it along like that, see? If you want that type of painting that you're doing. It's nice, look at that. So the different brushes do different things. That's nice. And just to a, a soft brush. So take all your brushes and experiment with them, okay? This is a flat synthetic brush. It's not bristle, it's soft, but yet it's springy. And this is nice too for making lines. See how nice and tiny that line is? It's also nice for just making some nice 
that would make nice water look at that see so all your brushes do different things really nice if you had a nice long, long liner brush it's a liner brush or a rigger brush you can use that for making really nice lines like a rigger brush or see how long it is thin it's great for making long lines like this see it's great for if you're doing trees and you need some nice um branches and things coming off it or or if you're making some kind of flowers or some kind of decoration for your flowers that's a really nice brush for that and the the lighter you are touching it the thinner the line if you push harder you get nice thick lines like that you can twirl it around and make different shapes and different things going on there look see so you know you just have fun with your brushes just have fun and you can also use uh, different types of brushes as an angular brush for some flowers angular brushes are nice for flowers right you can take your angular brush and you touch it on the angular like that if you want and it's pulled down you get a really nice leaf see see how it gives you a nice pointy top so play around with your brushes check them out see what they can do play around with your, your paints your colors you can have so much fun so much fun playing around with your brushes and when you're out buying them buy all different sizes and shapes and play around with them because when you're doing flowers trees bushes you're going to need these brushes see it's got a nice tip on it you can use just a tip for smaller shapes or you can push and get nice leaves if you push and lift push and lift <laughs> lift almost push see if you even just touch you got these really nice look nice hey so that gives you nice shapes there you can make nice flowers out of see and all you do is touch, touch, touch. So that's just a little bit today on how to use your brushes and what you can do with them and how you can use them in certain shapes. So we'll go with that one. So today I'd like to talk about composition. I'll give you some ideas of how to line up your paintings so that it looks so much more interesting. So let's take, for example, you want to make a nice painting of maybe an animal. Let's flip this up. If you're doing a tall tree, make sure that you have your canvas or your whatever you're painting on or draw, even drawing on, have your canvas um, portrait. Okay, so this is landscape and this is portrait. And I use portrait when I'm using tall objects. Okay, so say I'm using a tall tree. So if I just put a little bit bit of uh, hills back there not much of anything there and say I put a tree here somewhere and so I'm trying to get a composition I'm trying to decide where everything goes so it looks good so it doesn't look strange or things don't they look out of place so now I want to put in some subjects and objects or whatever so maybe I want to put in somebody walking so I won't put somebody walking in front of this tree because it blocks out the tree. It looks like a tree in the back there. It's just all jumbled together. We don't want that, okay? So make sure that you have your person away from the tree, all right? Have the person away from the tree and that will make it so much better, all right? So if you erase that, you'll see that looks so much better. So you have your person walking over here, you have a nice tree back here, 
and you could even have a few flowers up around the tree that's okay the person is walking and then you can put whatever else you want in here but that's one part of the composition so don't put the person or an animal in front of the tree because then the tree and the animal is too close together and it won't look as interesting so you just put your person let's make a little happy face uh, in front of your tree another example of having your composition so that it's interesting and looks good is to if you have, say, branches coming in here and you have flowers and different things coming in through here, and you might want some nice flowers coming in, make sure that all this comes in. It comes in. It's okay to come in. But don't let it run off the page because it would be more interesting to see the flowers here. All right? So make sure your flowers stay inside. I'm just trying to get a few of the little bumps and lumps here. And then you can keep make sure so that they don't get lost going off into nowhere. All right. So make sure to stay inside of your canvas or your painting. That makes it so much better. It makes it so much more prettier than just falling out of the canvas. If you're making... Um, I don't know, maybe, I think they'll be nice of this. I kind of like the portrait way because you can group things together. So what you can do is, I'll just cut this in half so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? So up here will be the, we'll call it the wrong way to do your composition. So the wrong way would to be put uh, a tree here, okay? So we got a tree here, nice big tree. And you got a tree here. And it's exactly the same shape, same size, right? And then you have your path coming straight down like this. See, everything looks just like it's everything's been cut in half. So if you group everything together, so we do it a nice way, you can make it interesting. So just cut that in half. And then we'll put our trees up here or anywhere you want to put them. And we'll have all different shapes. So you could have a short one here on this side. You could even have, a, you know, some different trees, right? You have a bunch of little trees here. And you could have some, if you want them come, if you want the trees to come closer to you, then you bring them closer down on the page and make it nice and tall. And that way you've got different right much more interesting so you can have a let's say you want that one a little further behind that one then you can that's behind that one now see so that'll come up here and you can have another tree that looks further back and then you can have as many trees as you want so you just come back a bit and you got different different trees in different places but are grouped together they're not just uh you know just like i showed you the other one that's not very interesting is it so you got these group of trees which is really really nice you might have some something going on back here maybe more trees in the back maybe smaller trees and then you can have like you can start your path or your water or your lake somewhere in the back here and make it tiny up here and then you can come around and give some interest by making it go like that and then when you come down here you can widen it out on the bottom just so that it's got some some kind of shapes going on something more interesting right and that way it looks so much better than that i will probably do a painting so i can show you a nice i'll do a painting and lay out the composition for you and that way you'll be able to see how pretty it is you can see right away that this one here has got no interest i mean look it's just two trees on either side you got that there even if you put a couple of hills in the background here is you know it's not going to be interesting because you don't have any trees and if they were all the same size they wouldn't look interesting they have to be all different sizes 
right? Because there's nothing going on here. They're all in the same place. They have moved. Well, if you move them down, you put little lines here, little lines like that, then that tree will be behind here. That tree will be here. That tree will be in front more. Be another tree back here. I use those little lines. I find really good when I'm doing trees and or when I want lay when I want to lay things out. I'll I'll make lines so I'll know that this one's in front of that one or maybe just one right here. Maybe there's a tree here. It's a great way to start off your trees. All right? See that? See how they? You could even have another one here. Oh, <laughs> see? You can have a line of them. See? And that makes them nice lined up. So, and you can make some taller than others, and you have some in between, right? So when you're doing trees, make sure they're all different sizes, okay? Now, sometimes you do get a a, a, a forest with a bunch of trees in there, but make sure the tops, at least the tops are different heights, okay? So that's a little bit of a, a trick for your composition. But this one looks so much nicer with the nice uh, lake or whatever it is a path you know gives us some shape some style of interest that is coming from way back here and it's moving around like that you can even make it wider at the bottom you know you can change it up whatever way you want and that makes it really interesting see you can always change things up but as long as you get the main get the main uh composition drawn you can draw it in first and paint it after way to do a composition a nice composition is if you if you overlap things like say you got um some fruit on the table you got some fruit on the table so you got maybe apples and oranges or whatever so you can overlap them and that will give more interest rather than they just one here and one here and one here one here right but if you overlap your objects, whether it's fruit, well, those are two the same size, I'd rather have a couple of different sizes, and or whether it's a, a vase, put some flowers, you can over put a fruit in front of your vase, right? And that will make it so much more interesting. So much more interesting. So many different ways that you can do things. Because you might be doing paintings and going, what is wrong with my painting? It doesn't look right. It has a lot to do with the composition, how you lay it out. And the colors. There's a lot to it. You know, people think they can pick up a brush and throw some paint on there. And sometimes they can. And then all of a sudden they're like, something don't look right. But if you overlap things, like you could even have... Uh, Um, gifts, boxes, right? And you can overlap those. So overlapping is really, really nice. There we go. See? Looks much better than a box here and a box there and a box here. See? They're overlapped. They look so much nicer. See? It does look nicer, doesn't it? So, that's kind of nice. That's a nice little layout. Like I said, you can compare the layout and you can see how uninteresting this one is. But look how nice and interesting this is. The overlap to the, and it makes us, when this is painted or drawn, it looks the really Composition pretty. would be, if you're making a road, it's like your path, right? Well, like our path. Let's, let's go with our path. Um, this one here, it's too straight. Right, but if you took if you took that up there, just watch the difference. If you took that and you widened it down here a little bit, widen it out down here a little bit, okay. And what you can do is let's say this is a road or. A Oh, it could be a, it could be a road it could be a path I would say path and if you take that and you bring it together like this that looks so much better and then you can have a nice then you can have your fence maybe a fence or something on there right so you can have your fence going there then see 
and uh, so that will make it so much better if it touches up here and then it starts to widen out as it comes down with the big letter V. Okay. That looks so much better. Right, so you could also have it that way. You don't have to, the other way, we made it nice and squiggly and we went around, up around the bend for mystery of where it's coming from. And then if you had the straight one like that, you can certainly have it touching up here and then widening out as it comes down. And then you can have your, some trees or you can have a fence here. So here we now, go. You could use a ruler to do this. It'd be much easier for you to use a ruler. So you look for the point, put a little dot in the center here, and then you can take that dot and you bring your lines to the dot, right, like this. And then you widen it out and then you, right, so now you've got two straight lines, but yet it, it narrows in as if it's going off somewhere. And then if you want to add another line further away, still use that dot, and then you take your line and you draw that. And then now you've got something to help you keep in case you want a fence or something. If you want a fence, just stay within those lines, and then you got your fence. See? or whatever you want to put there right same over here you can make an even wider line if you want oh <laughs> my ruler moved on me I'll leave that out another way you can uh, lay out your composition is if you want to bring somebody's eye up say you got a little house up here little house and you have a little path or whatever, maybe some grassy area, maybe a little path. So the path will draw your eye right up into the house, okay? So you're walking up the path. So when you when you look at a painting, you'll see the path and then you see the little house because your, your eye is being drawn up to the house. And if you're making grass or flowers or whatever, bring those flowers up into the grass up to the house so it looks like you're drawing you're trying to take the eye and bring it up into the house okay so it put because if you if you draw them away like this your eye is going to go this way but if you want to draw if this is your focal point if this little house is your focal point put your flowers and your grass pointing towards that house so point things towards the house whether it's light or grass or trees you know, so make sure everything is pointing towards that house. And that will draw your eye right up into your focal point. Another point uh, to point out for your composition is if you have some birds in the sky. So if you have birds in the sky, try to group them in threes instead of um, twos. One, two, three. Okay, so you got three of them grouped together rather than have them spread out. You know, if you put two birds together, it's not going to be as interesting as the three. See, you, you can see the difference already, right? Maybe maybe a group of uh, one, a uh, couple of big ones, and then the smaller ones will be further away. So one, two, three, maybe, maybe it's way back here, and maybe even five. Five, right instead of four they have more interest so but the three always three is always really nice I find with uh, birds or or animals if you have some animals on the farm you know you could put your animals in groups of three you know but don't have them all the same size now or or look in the same way just group them all together in threes and then they will look interesting so you got one there and you got Probably overlapping almost. <laughs> Look at that funny little one there. Isn't it cute? And then another one over here. So they look kind of cute when they're grouped together like that. And in threes. So in pairs of threes. Try to keep that in mind. Well, we're showing you different ways you can use your fan brush for grass. So 
I'm going to show you another way to make some grass with your fan brush. So you can just get some uh, color for your grass. Whatever color you want to use, you can make some blues and greens and yellows. Whatever color you want, make some kind of a different color green, doesn't matter. And then you can make, come down here, right? just put this on like that. And then all you have to do then is take your paint and and then you tap at that, like I showed you before with small taps. And then you can have your grass on top of that, like that, see? The short taps on the top of your brush. See how nice that is? That makes nice grass, doesn't it? I'm pushing a little bit hard in some cases, but there we go, that looks pretty good. Also with your liner brush, you can put on some, some of your grass. You can put it on like this, or you can tap it on. But if you want longer grass coming out of that, you can use your liner brush for that. A lot of those brushes that I used, uh, showed you, you can use them for all kinds of things. But I just wanted to show you some of this. So you can take that, make sure it's nice and wet. Just put any color on it that you want, greenish color. And you can bring up some grass like this, see? Isn't that nice? Look at that. That's cool. Look at that. See? That's the liner brush. The nice grass you get out of that. That's something I could do all day. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice, isn't it? You can thicken it up if you want. You know, you can add, keep overlapping it. As we talked about overlapping for composition. See, now you make it nice and thick and dark underneath here. See that? Leave the taps a little bit, but bring in your, bring in some dark color in the bottom here and that will that will make it really nice look at that see so that brings out see the more you do it the, the nicer it gets because you got now you got some nice dark values and you got those light tops there and if you want it even lighter you can add some white to your brush and you can bring in some lighter now the background's white so you can't really see it but you can bring in some of those lighter colors there if you want look at that now that's with a liner brush See, it's pretty, isn't it? You can also scrape out some grass if you want to, all right? I'm just using a toothpick, but you can use a stylus. Now, you can also scrape out some lighter grasses. See? Same if you make trees, you make trees say, with your fan brush. You put in some trees, just tap, tap some trees. Make sure you get the top and then you bring down these trees. And this could be a forest or, you know, forest trees, or, right? So you just get the top with your fan brush, the very tip. And then once you get that, you can move down. Getting the tops is the, the main thing. And then once you get that done, when you're happy with it, you, make sure you can let that be nice and dark on the bottom here. And then you can get tree trunks by scraping out the tree trunks, see? And it looks like you got a bunch of tree trunks. You can use a toothpick if you don't have a stylus. And then you got tree trunks. Lots of little different tips and tricks that you can use and have a bit of fun with. Here we go. There's a shadow. We don't want the shadow, do we? But you can see that. It's cute. Lots of little tips and make tricks. Make some weeds in your grass. So make your grass. Get some grass going on here. You can do this if you want. Or you can turn your brush this way. Get some grass coming up like that. Okay, and then you can use your liner brush again. To get some more grass going on in there. I'm going to use a lighter color so that I can, so you can see it, right, so you can get some, because I have a white background, it'd be nice to have a darker background. So you can take some of these and make some really tall, really tall grasses, some tall ones coming out. And then, then you can add some of these little, they can look like weeds and tall grass or different types of 
glasses going. Yeah, it's your little dots like that. Gives a different look. You can also take take them and pull out some of this like this. Just so it looks like soft weeds, soft types of grass. Just pull them out like that. See, you got different types of grass going on inside the grass. This is all with your liner brush. Okay. Just these little bit different types of grass growing in the grass. <laughs> yep. Cattails. Just pull it up and touch. There we go. And then you can even have some maybe a twigs coming out of there. Maybe some twigs. Twigs. So you'd have to make sure that your brush is nice and wet so that you can get that really those really thin lines. Right? You have twigs coming out. You can overlap, it's okay. Could be in front of that one. And then you get some twigs coming out this way. See, lots of things you can do with your brushes. Fan brush, you can have so much fun with your fan brush and your liner brush together. Right? See all the things you can do? You wouldn't believe it. <laughs>